Good morning, Central Church. On this warm and wilty day, it is a good and glorious thing to be together with community of faith and our church family. Thank you, Lisa, for your music and uh, for that wonderful opportunity to begin preparing ourselves for worship, for this time of offering ourselves to God. We are glad to be together again. Now, Bill Carmine asked me if my sermon was short in order to get us out quicker today. And I said, all right now. And I said, well, if I, the faster I speak, the hotter I get. But the faster I speak, the quicker you get out of here. So it's a needs of the many and the needs of the one thing. So there's an ethical dilemma going on here. It's not a long sermon, I promise. But we have gathered for worship this morning. Um, just, just a note that, oh, I have a couple of notes. Um, to be in prayer for, um, what was the name? Liberty Fellowship, was it the Baptist Church Vinny was just talking about? Liberty Fellowship on Franklin Baptist, or Liberty Baptist, or whatever. Um, their van broke down, so our van driver today has just gone to sort of rescue their stranded people. So uh, pray for them, and, you know, getting out of the heat and getting a van fixed. It's no easy or cheap matter to, to get a van fixed these days. So our prayers are with them. Um, you know, I'm stalling because I know there was one more thing I was supposed to say. I don't remember what it was. It's the heat. And I broke my neck. <laughs> That's my excuse for everything now. Anyway, I'll think of it, and if I don't, it must not have been important. So we have gathered to sing God's praise, to listen for God's voice, to be the community of faith together. May the Holy Spirit fill this time, fill our hearts. Remind us that we are in exactly the right place at exactly the right time. Welcome to worship. Good morning, Central. And a very good morning to our TV audience this morning. We are glad that you are here with us through the wonders of television. And we hope that our service does a good thing for you today. And all those in the center aisle will pick up those little pads and sign your name and pass them on down. <clears throat> and also, I have a mental block this morning. <clears throat> and all those, if there was anyone here today who is here for the first time, uh, we welcome you and congratulate you for coming today, this wonderful day that we have. On the way out, there are packets that give you a little more information about the church. Uh, pick one up and see what else goes on in this church. We have two minute speakers this morning. Good morning. Central cares, and that's what makes this church so wonderful. As part of Central's um, mission, we like to show our caring for all people. So next Sunday, after the church service, um, there is going to be a group of us go up to Absolute Nursing Center to the Alzheimer's unit. These are often God's forgotten people, um, people who no longer get visitors, many who can no longer speak and interact with their world, but music is a great connection. So next week, those of you who are free, who want to go up, even if you can't sing, even if you can just give a touch to someone alongside of you, we are going to go up after the service next Sunday. Um, we'll be there from 11 to 11.30 singing simple um, hymns and some secular songs. Last year there were three of us went up and we didn't have any accompaniment, nothing. Um, we just winged it <laughs> and sang some songs with them, and it was amazing to see the reaction of the people. It was heartwarming. There were words we forgot that were filled in by some of the residents that were there, um, and it, it really makes a difference. We're also bringing um, shampoo and conditioner. Um, of course, what they use in the nursing homes is, is very cheap stuff, and especially the women, it dries their hair out, they get snags. It hurts them. 
So we're bringing them shampoo, conditioner, lip balm, and these hearts that say you are loved. Um, some of them don't have much mobility anymore. Um, the friend that I visit up there, um, she is pretty much in her bed most of the time. And last week when I was there, I realized her only view is mainly of the side of her nightstand. So I am going to put this on the side of her nightstand where she can see it. She may not be able to read it, but she'll probably recognize the shape of the heart and know she is loved. So if you are interested in going, please um, see me after church because I'm trying to make out um, lyrics lists so that we don't forget the words. <laughs> um, so I know how many to bring. And um, please take advantage of this opportunity if you think it's, it's something um, that meets your gifts. Thank you. Good morning, Central. It's a long walk. I sat in the back because I'm right in front of the fan. Um, just want to give you a little update on some things, the happenings that are going on this summer uh, as we work towards uh, two of our big summer events. The first one would be uh, backpacks. We uh, were upstairs uh, one day this week before it got hot and started taking an inventory. I want to thank all of you who have bar, um, donated supplies or money towards the backpack program and the school supplies. The school lists are starting to come in. So we are starting to inventory to see what we still need, what we have enough of. And hopefully next week, in next week's bulletin, I'll have a little insert for you. Because there are some items that were not on the original list out on the board, especially for the younger kids, like packages of wet wipes, a box of tissues, Clorox wipes, things of that nature. The one thing I know we still do need, actually, are backpacks. Last time I checked, we had 54 children who had already signed up. Uh, for the backpacks, and we only have 26 backpacks. So that's one thing we're going to be looking at. Having said that, um, on August 11th, right after the service, we're going to be getting together to organize and get the supplies ready and bagged and ready to go. So anyone who would like to stay afterwards and give us a hand, we'd be really, really appreciate that. Um, maybe we can get some snacks and make a party out of it, uh, but we really would appreciate your help. Speaking of parties, did you like that segue? Speaking of parties, um, Black Party is coming up faster than we know. And we do need your help. There's an insert this week in the bulletin about um, signing up to uh, work at the different tables. So we need folks for food tables, games, help with the crafts, um, welcome center. We're going to have one for the Sunday school. Uh, all, all kinds of opportunities, set up, tear down, anything you think you might be able to lend a hand to. The actual block party runs from 11 to 3. We're going to be setting up really, really early, like 8 o'clock. Uh, and at 2, we'll begin giving out backpacks down here between 2 and 3. So we'll also need hope, some folks to help with that. There are many opportunities to serve, and you, you know, don't have to be there for the whole time. An hour at a time is fine. Uh, if you have any questions, just you know, give us a call and we can point you in the right direction. One thing we are really looking for and hoping to get is a prize for our drawing, our giveaway. And this year we'd like to do either an iPad or a tablet. The reason being that a lot more students in schools are using finding uses for those in the schools. In fact, some schools even have them as part of their regular school supply list. If you can find it in your heart to donate a brand new uh, iPad or tablet, or maybe a few folks go together on it, um, this would go a long way to bringing in the kids from the neighborhood, um, getting their information, uh, and hopefully uh, bringing them to the block party and having them have a good time and reaching out to our community. So um, if you have any questions on any of these, um, our, our mission coordinator, Dee Loman, is here today. I'm here today, and you can always call the church office. Thank you. <clears throat> and the rest of the announcements for the week. Uh, don't forget uh, Monday, tomorrow night, at the California Grill. Michelle is going to continue her book study on the amazing grace of vocabulary of faith by Kathleen Norris. 
And all of you who uh, don't have anything to do on an early Sunday morning, uh, we're still looking for people to host or even bake for our Cafe Central at this church. So if you'd like to do that, uh, you can sign up in the Welcome Center or contact Shelley Liberito. Uh, we could use some people to help to do that. I know I enjoy going there because I get something to eat after I've had breakfast. And uh, for all those who would want to help, I would appreciate it. And Tuesday, July the 23rd, that is this Tuesday at 6.30, mini golf at Chucksters on the Vestal Parkway. Mini golf is $10 per person, and afterwards they're going to have ice cream after the round of golf. Meet at Chucksters at 6.30, and all ages are welcome. And now if you join me with the call to worship, please. Holy One, we have too many things to do. Help us to take a deep breath. Help us to work and for and with our brothers and sisters. Let us pray together. Holy One, grant us in this hour that we not be overtaken with anxious thoughts that blind us to your presence. Give us a chance to sit at your feet, to enjoy every word and note that we may feel your real presence and in turn live out God only wise. turn to your left and turn to your right and greet your neighbor with the peace of Christ.
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the New Testament. It's the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, on page 72 in your pew Bible. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. And now we come to a time in which we offer ourselves and our gifts to God's purpose. And if you're a first time visitor this morning, please don't feel obligated to put a offering, give us an offering because your presence today is your gift to us. God bless you. Would the ushers please come forward.
may be seated. And now a time for joys and sorrows. First, keep in mind your prayers for specific families who received our prayer once each year. Ron and Sandy Bickler, Don and Kim Cook, Ruth McNeil, Richard and Jennifer Erickson, Skip and LeBon Hossaman, Michelle and Linda, or Michael and Linda Kenyon, Russell and Sharon Reed, Duncan and Mary Seats too, David and Elaine Wright, Don and Linda Young. And also don't forget our church families and friends, George Winsorl, Angela Suraminas, Chuck Loudon is at Fairview Rehab, and all of our homebound members. And our sympathy this week's go out and extended to Sandy Bichler on the death of her sister Margaret and the family and friends of Betty Carmen, whose funeral was yesterday. We bring these concerns in our hearts this morning, but we also bring celebration, places where we've seen God at work in our world this week, and I'm wondering where you have seen that this week. The community coming together to provide cooling centers for those who don't have fans or air conditioning. Yes, uh, my friend and friend of my regular came over to the house with air conditioning five days ago. <laughs> He's thanking God for the work of Greg, who appeared with an air conditioner for him. Yeah. Stars in the sky last night was beautiful. So Ed Driver had a, family, a cousin's reunion, right? 16 cousins from all over the country gathered yesterday. Just beautiful to have family together. God works even in the heat. You got to be a good Samaritan this week and go back. Were they still out there? Oh, gosh. So Vinny's reporting back on his Baptist church run. <laughs> Being the good Samaritan feels good to do that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's a big deal. So Carolyn's, wow, Carolyn has discovered family. A woman Facebook friend requested her, said she'd been looking for her for 20 years. She's a half-sister, and there's a whole family in Texas now that Carolyn is beginning to know. It's incredible. Oh, yeah, Dee. So uh, a, a woman that Dee and I both know, a good friend of our family and of Troy Annual Conference, Mary Lois Tupper, um, was also my accountant for years, uh, is moving um, away from Schenectady area to Wisconsin. And 
Dee is watching the, the goodness of God and the work of God in her family who is hosting open houses throughout the next few weeks for people to come and say goodbye and tell her how much they love her before she moves away. And I think that's, that's beautiful. Um, but God is at work when we think about those things for each other. Yes. Hmm. Three. And you got you gonna be an aunt again? And tell me your name again. Julia. Julia is celebrating um, a new relationship and being an aunt again, and her dogs at home and seeing God in all those joys. Yeah. Mika oh, today. Michaela and Susie closed, in, closed on their house on Friday. They bought a house, and they're moving in today. <laughs> Yay! I'm melting! <laughs> Shall we join together in prayer? Holy and loving God, we are so grateful for all the ways that you work in our lives. We are so grateful for family and friends and celebrations. We are so grateful for all the ways that people show us love and your love through that act and for all the ways that we are able to show love to others. We are mindful today when the weather isn't our favorite thing. That so many more are plagued by disaster. That so many in our community have no respite from heat and humidity and severe weather. And so today we pray for all the members of our beloved family anywhere they are sisters and brothers we do not even know who need relief from heat or wind or storm or flood or famine. We get stuck in our own inconvenience and our own discomfort and we forget sometimes that we suffer alongside so many. We ask that you stir the hearts of those who can help. Stir the generosity and kindness that is wired into each one of us. That help may be found where it is deeply needed. We pray for a world that struggles to be at peace that struggles to find comfort and food for all its inhabitants. We pray that when you nudge and pull and push people to do your will, when you nudge people to serve and to help, that they may listen and heed the call. They may pay attention to all the ways you're reaching out For we are your hands and your feet in the world. We are your hearts and love. We are the flesh you have here. Help us to live up to that potential. We've prayed already for so many. 
persons we wish to keep close to our hearts this week. But there are so many more we carry in our own hearts that we've brought with us today into prayer, into the embrace of this family. And so in this moment of prayer, in the grace of this space, hear us as we lift them to you, as we speak their names aloud. Each name is a story, each name is a need that you know better than we do. Fill us with power and purpose to reach these people and meet their needs as best as we can. Lord, in your love, hear our prayers. For we ask each one in the name of Jesus the Christ as we offer to you the prayer he first taught us to pray. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our second reading this morning is taken from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 24 through 28. And I'll be reading from the message. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church. I became his servant according to God's commission, that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. That ends the reading. Getting where that'll blow on me. Does anybody remember a show called Short Attention Span Theater? Anybody remember that? One. 1989 to 1993, I'm dating myself. It was a show first hosted by Jon Stewart. That's where we first met Jon Stewart. It showed brief clips from stand-up comedy and films. It gave you a taste of what was going on on HBO and Cinemax in short little bites. Short bites for people who don't have enough time for the long version. Short attention span theater just about works as a title for my life right now. So many things going on in so many places, so many plates spinning in the air. I find it difficult to pay long stretches of attention to any one of them. Nate can tell you that my brain is functioning like a computer browser with 675 tabs open all the time. Right? Yeah. He he never knows. I just come out with stuff. It's like, oh, it's that tab is open. This tab is open. Is it just me? Oh, good. I'm not alone. This is the opposite, though, of what I hear in the scriptures today. And I've got to say, I felt a bit of conviction in my heart when they confronted me with that reality as I read through them and studied. I spent half the week wondering why I picked these scriptures several months ago out of the lectionary. I mean, there are four choices each week in the lectionary. I could have chosen the other ones, but I chose these, and I spent the first half of the week wondering why. And then I spent half the week, the other half of the week, realizing that I needed to work with them, and they needed to work on me. That's the secret of preaching, by the way, is that sometimes you're preaching because the stuff needs to work on you. We don't say that too often. It's funny sometimes how the Holy Spirit works on us 
bursting in on whatever we've planned and whatever else we're busy doing and says, instead, pay attention to this. Which is what I think these scriptures are all about. Most seasoned churchgoers have heard the Mary and Martha story before, this story of contrast between being busy and being contemplative. Martha and Mary form patterns of discipleship and spiritual growth that we still refer to today. Are we thinkers or are we doers? Are we contemplative or are we constructive? Many a Martha type envies the Mary types. And I'm not so sure that many Marys envy the Martha types. I don't know. I'm in the Martha camp. I'm team Martha all the way. And then Paul's letter to his church at Colossae this recitation of what Paul understands the task and the cost of discipleship to be, written as lessons on discipleship for people in the church. Both of these scriptures that we heard today get to the same point, I think, which is essentially this. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention to the important things. Spend time on the important things. Put away the non-essentials and focus on the essentials, or you will miss it. We say it a lot, don't we? Don't blink, you'll miss it. We talk about spectacular sunsets or starry skies or picturesque drives or the fleeting early years of our children's lives. Don't blink, you'll miss it. We often mean by that, don't focus your attention somewhere else or it will pass you by. We know it to be true. We know this is true. But we get stuck when we try to figure out what we're supposed to pay attention to. What are the essential things? And often that's because we've gotten so caught up in our priority lists or we're so busy running around with our hair on fire trying to get everything done that we don't even know how to identify the essential things anymore. In the gospel lesson, Martha thinks that hers is the essential work. If she doesn't do what she's doing, nobody's getting supper. Chores have to be done, food has to be cooked, work is necessary for life to happen, and she's doing work, and Mary's not. She's utterly put out, as my grandmother would have said, when Jesus points out to her that her work is less essential than paying attention to what he's trying to teach them. I can totally relate to Martha. And how many of us get stuck in that trap? How many retired men over the course of my ministry, how many retired men have I talked with in every single congregation I've pastored who wish they had spent more time with their kids when they were growing up? How many moms in every single congregation who feel split, constantly pulled with equal force between making a living and paying quality attention to their relationships with their partner, with their children? How many workaholics have I sat in my office with who wish they had taken more time to travel or find a spouse or eat more ice cream or watched more sunsets? What Jesus says here is what Jesus says everywhere. The essential things or the things of the Spirit. You remember that, that beautiful part of the, the book, The Little Prince, you know, what is essential is seen with the heart. These are the things of the Spirit. These are the things of God. And Paul says it too in his letters to his churches. The essential things are not the things of rules and regulations. They're not the things of judgment and condemnation. They're not the things of separation or exclusion. The essential things are fundamentally spiritual things. The things you can't measure 
or quantify or compare with other people and gauge who has more and who has less. What Paul says is exactly what Jesus says. None of that matters. What you do, when you do it, how much you accomplish in a day, how much money you have, how updated your phone is, how expensive your house or car, how right you are in matters of politics and religion, none of that is essential. So what is? What is the whole truth? What is the mystery of life? What is the essential thing we are supposed to be and do and pay attention to? I think Paul gets right at it in this letter. Paul shares it with his church in this letter. The essential thing is this. The mystery is this. Christ is in you. Pay attention to that. To his churches, endlessly wrangling over who's in, who's out, and what rules to follow, and what rules to enforce, and what to eat, and how to worship, and what teacher to follow, and what teacher to abandon, to his churches who are wrangling over all of that all of the time, read the letters, they're Crazy congregations. Paul says, enough. Enough. You are not paying attention. To people of today endlessly prioritizing the trivial and pursuing the unimportant, Paul would say exactly the same thing. Pay attention because you are missing the mystery and the power of life. You are missing the great and grand inheritance given to you as beloved children of God. You've been touched by the love of God in the living and dying and living again of the reality of Christ. Christ is present in you. Pay attention. Prioritize that. Pursue a life in him. So how do we even make that shift if that's not where we're at? And I would say, I would guess, I'm not making assumptions, I would say if I asked in this room, a lot of us would raise our hands and say that's not our first priority, if we're honest. So how do we make that shift? How do we switch off the pursuit of the trivial? How do we shake off the need to be busy all the time, the need to get things done, the false conviction that everything has to get done. How do we start paying attention? Well, there's a certain amount of willpower to develop for that, a certain amount of broad vision we have to develop in order to look at our own lives honestly, maybe brutally. I'm still working on it and failing a lot at it. But I have found with all my plate spinning and the endless tabs open in my brain that when I am brave enough to sit in Mary's seat for a while, even when I have to make myself do it, even when my heart is not really in it, and I'm quite sure I will fail at it, Sitting in Mary's seat helps. Making a priority, putting the tasks aside, even for five minutes. Now, I know I can always pick them back up if I feel like I need to after five minutes, and that helps with the Martha anxiety that sets in. But five minutes, five minutes. Do you know how many minutes are in a day? I meant to look that up before this morning. You know how many minutes are in a day? Take five of them. Just breathing and listening and waiting for the touch of God. I know somebody's looking that up. Amber. (laughs) I guarantee it, the first time you try to sit in Mary's seat for five whole minutes, it will feel like an absolute eternity. And your monkey brain will find you pushing in with all the stuff you're leaving behind for that five whole minutes. 
And the kids will knock on the door, literally or metaphorically. And your spouse will suddenly need you desperately. And the phone will ring five times. These are all important things. But they are certainly not essential for those five whole minutes. We are invited all the time to prioritize the essential, to sit in Mary's seat, to breathe in and breathe out and pay attention. Christ is in us. Paul says that's the whole mystery. Christ is in us, and when we look, we will find him. It's the simple mystery of faith. And it's the good news. Thanks be to God for it. Amen. As you go into this week and into this world, may it be so. May it be well with your soul as you listen for what is 
true and hear the word and love of God in your heart. Learn to pay attention because it's there and it is well. Go in peace. Amen.